We're going to have some fun today, exploring metaprogramming with the define property method. To understand what define property can do, we need to take a step back and see where properties are used. Notice that in our model, and in our routes, and in our controller, that after the extend, there's a hash. Anything in that hash is a property. So here in the model, title, author, date, and body are all properties. In the routes, model is a property. And in our controller, is editing, edit, and done editing are also properties. Of course, we don't always call them properties. We would call done editing a function because a function has been assigned to the done editing property. And we might, we might call title an attribute because an attribute has been assigned to the title property. So let's take one of our properties and re-implement it using define property, just so we can show the mechanics of define property. For our purpose today, define property will take in three parameters. Here, it will take in the context, and the second is the property name, and then the third is the value. And then let's go ahead and comment this out because we're just going to be using this for reference. In order to define our property, we're going to need a property to put that functionality on. So we'll call this define attributes. And it will be a function that will be called on init. A property that is called on init will be run at the initialization of this model so that it's going guaranteed run before the property that we're defining ever gets called. So within this function, we're going to call ember.defineProperty. Then we're going to give it the context, which is this model. Then we'll go ahead and give it the property name, which is title. And then the value, which is ds.adder. With this done, we can take out how we defined title before and check that it works. We'll refresh this page and the title is there and still responding as an attribute. Now let's go ahead and define all these attributes like this. We'll go ahead and make an attributes property and we'll put in there all the attributes that we've used, title, author, date, and body. Then we're going to make a loop over those. So we're going to grab the attributes and call for each. We'll feed the function inside the attribute and then put our define property within that loop. Of course, it won't work right off the bat. Right now, it's just going to be defining title four times. So let's put the attribute name in place there. And then it's a little tricky because this is now scoped to the for each. We want it scoped to the model. So here we're going to put define a variable called model. And then we're going to use that in here. And at that point, we should be able to replace all of our other attributes with the defined properties. And when we reload our page, we'll see that it works. It's working just as before, even though we've defined these on the fly at runtime. The case that inspired this screencast was a group of methods that we were defining by hand for every day of the week. There were three such method groups, resulting in 21 total methods. Define property not only reduced the amount of code, but made adding new functionality or changing the current fun functionality easier. However, you should be careful when using this method. You'll notice that in the Ember inspector, in the post, it is only recognizing the ID. Ember inspector doesn't recognize the attributes that we define at runtime. And metaprogramming is notorious for being hard to support with tools. So by being clever, you're giving up some of the ecosystem's support. 
Second, the source code contains a warning. It says this is a low-level method used by other parts of the API, and you almost never want to call this method directly. Instead, you should use imbro.mixin to define new properties. Mixins, if you don't know, allow you to define properties on the mixin that get used in whichever class that the mixin is applied to. If you look at the source code of mixin.js, you'll see that in apply mixin, after doing lots of very clever things, it calls define property on every property defined in your mixin. This is an example of what Tom Dale and Yehuda Katz spoke about in their recent keynote, using a low-level flexible API like define property to build a safer, higher-level API like mixins. So while you can probably think of some places in your project where you can use define property to simplify your code and reduce repetition, remember that it is a powerful tool, so use it responsibly. And happy coding.